Alright, here we have Fall of the Candy King. It's its own little Windows game from the Candy Jam. Not sure what we're getting into here, but it looks like an RPG, so. Alright, let's go find this uh, life crystal thing. I think middle guy is going to be the key to this. Questions are hard, aren't they? You think you'll answer them? You might as well, I'm not really sure. I think I found another way, but you might not like it. Wanna hear? I found an artifact the sooner still is say. Oh, that sounds ominous. Now you didn't earn life crystals, all you have to do is find lingering spirits from legal history and find, feel their pain. That uh, that also sounds ominous. It won't hurt you. Mr. Candy wouldn't survive, but we believe in you. Take the still say? Yes. So look for the blue quartz spirits. Ah, there's blue flames. I got it. Maybe that's how you learn things. Okay. And that's why you get the refresher. Right, 2014 mobile game giant King Limited made news by trying to shut down games using the words candy and saga in spite of minimal possibility of confusion. Though achieving landmark notoriety and trademark trolling, Candy Crush Saga developer King has themselves been accused of intellectual property theft. Indie dev Matthew Cox claims to have been discussing the release of his game Scamper Ghost with King, but back then when another site offered a better deal. Kingdom soon released Pack Avoid, a game that Cox points out as a direct clone of Scamper Ghost. Other critics point out the striking similarity of Candy Crush Saga to Popcaps Bejeweled. <laughs> Suck it. Yeah, now we're dropping some knowledge. Some truth. Late 2012, gaming news site Gauntlet Suture reported that some developers were having their games removed from the iOS app store for using the word memory in their titles. Notice le this one I didn't know about, actually. Notice allegedly it came from board game maker Ravensburger, who owns trademark for the classic game memory in 42 countries, but not the United States. Gaming press is expect expecting more news. At this game's release, no legal action has been reported. Interesting. So that's why they suggested memory is one of the keywords. Now you know. Edge, this one I know about. Edge Games Inc. has been involved in numerous disputes over the Edge trademark in spite of a 15 year old window during which the company made no games. Moby Games Edge was taken down multiple times due to legal threats, but larger games such as Namco Soul Edge and EA Games Mirror's Edge were targeted as well. In 2010, a suit filed by EA ultimately re resulted in a settlement wherein Tim Langdell, Edge Games owner and founder and chief douchebag, was stripped of the trademarks but not charged. That guy was such a hand job. Work our way to the refresher here. Dance game innovator or thief Konami has had multiple legal battles with Korean rival and Amiro, each one claiming that the other infringed on its design. That was Pump It Up versus Dance Dance Revolution. Konami claimed infringement of Andamiro's Pump It Up in Seoul, while Andamiro took the fight to Dance Dance Revolution in California. The many lawsuits were settled out of court, which details of the settlement kept secret from the public. There are some similarities, but it's different enough. I mean, Pump It Up has more buttons and is at different angles. I feel there should be more than one dance game with arrow stepping in it. It's only fair. The video game model with Konami had worked with the Cambridge-based company Harmonix on Karaoke Revolution. Their announcement of Rock Revolution changed the playing field, where they ripped off. Well, no, they didn't rip off. Rock Band. They sort of did? Yeah, Konami bought studio against Harmonix in 2008, claiming that they had filed, filed patents as early as 2002 for the instrument like video game controllers, which they had for the, the rest of the Bimani series. The case lasted for years. Ultimately, the details of the settlement are not available to public, and Harmonix faced suit from other companies such as guitar maker Gibson and Guitar Hero owner Activision. The fair rock band was awesome, but um, yeah, Konami put out uh, Guitar Freaks, uh, Drum Mania, I think Keyboard Freaks or something, and of course Beat Mania 2DX, well, B the whole Beat Mania series. Um, so they had stuff long before Rock Band or even Guitar Hero came out. So they were in the right on that. 
And to be fair, Rock Revolution was terrible. So there's that. Two well-loved developers ended up at odds in 2011 with Bethesda Software's claim that Mojang, the creators of Minecraft, were infringing on their Elder Scrolls trademark. Uh, this is my favorite. After the Edge one. With the announcement of a game called Scrolls, Mojang did not relent and went to court with Zenimax, Bethesda's owner. Are they going to mention the Quake thing? Because that was the best part of this. Ultimately, a settlement was reached. Bethesda kept their trademark, but Mojang was allowed to use the title Scrolls. No. They didn't mention that Mojang was like, let's settle this in a game of Quake, and they did not accept. But... Let's, uh, refresh. Bravery. Six life crystals, thou bleeds for thine cause. I bequeath unto thee the throne room key. Let's do it. Welcome to the throne room key. Obviously. There you are. Those life crystals. I admire your bravery. You have been through hell to get here. I enjoy thousand grueling sagas to save the candy kingdom. Indeed you would, wouldn't you? Likely crushed to the edge of your life, possibly beyond. I can't live in the memory of the kingdom as a tyrant. I'll find some other kingdom to squat on. Well, that was close. At least the kingdom is safe for now. Facing legal threats and IP law abuse is difficult for creators. It can cost tremendous amounts of time, resources, and goodwill. Those who can't afford the cost must capitulate. If creative development is to be an achievable task for everyone, the problem must be attacked at the source. Please research and support IP law reform. And you just get a scatter shot of candy. But there you go. Candy, uh, the Fall of the Candy King. All three endings. So, I can understand if you don't want to play it, but if you do, it's at thecandygm.com. It's pretty nice. Like, it, like you may have noticed, you learned some things. It's all good. It's all good. I'm glad they put that spin on it. Definitely worth your time. And even if you don't want to play this one, there's plenty of other games there. Check them out. Some are more serious than others. Some are better looking than others. Some are more fun than others. I'm playing them all, or as many as I can, anyway. Hence the very long playlist. But yeah. There's a lot of them. 400 zone as of uh, this recording. There might be more by the time I'm done. Enjoy.